Um, so thankful for my wife and my family. Um, and I just, I, I couldn't do it without them. I know that I couldn't. Um, she is, she's more than just my, my right hand. Amen. She's a helpmate that God gave me. And I've said it before. I really believe that God put me in a deep sleep and jerked a rib out of me <laughs> and made her. I, I don't know how many I'm supposed to have, but I think I'm missing one. And God gave it to her. So uh, I appreciate her today. John chapter 12. We want to start reading, uh, I guess, about verse number 20. The Bible said, And there were certain Greeks among them uh, that came up to worship at the feast. Verse number 21, The same came uh, therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida, of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Notice this was, these were Greeks, and they came and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Verse number 22, Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, uh, and again Andrew, uh, Philip telleth Jesus. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Amen. Verse 21 again, the Bible said, uh, The same came, talking about the Greeks, the same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida, of Galilee, and desired him. How many desires the Lord today? Amen. I desire him. Desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Or they said, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Amen. We'd like to preach that thought to you today. Amen. We want to see Jesus. Amen. We want to see Jesus. Amen. You can stand. You can sit. You can shout. You can run out the back door. It don't matter to me as long as the Lord's in it. <laughs> Amen. I've seen too many folk do stuff without the Lord. And I've already told my church, if we catch you doing stuff without the Lord, you'll be sitting down. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We need more sitting down in the church world today. Amen. Amen. But I'm going to think about the Bible teaches us here that Amen. Uh, the fame of Christ had begun to spread. Amen. Throughout the land. As the Bible tells me that there was many people that was with Jesus as he gets, begins to make his, amen, his, uh, his entry into Jerusalem. And in Matthew chapter number 21, the Bible gives us a great record of things that happened. Amen. Just before this hour, uh, the Bible says that Jesus looked at his disciples and he said, Go into the village over there. And he said, and You'll find. Amen, an ass, a little donkey that's tied up there. And you'll also find, amen, a little colt that's tied up there with her. And Jesus said, I want you to loose them and bring them to me. And he said, if any man would ask you what you're doing, or if any man would have all against you for that, he said, I want you to tell them the Lord hath need of them. And he said, and he will send them, amen, to me. And I began to think about the Bible said that the disciples, they go and do that, and they bring this little, this little donkey and this little colt back to Jesus and the Bible teaches it, it would have been one that had never been written before. And I begin to think about that, you know, why was Jesus asking for that little colt? And the Bible know we know the Bible teaches us that it was prophesied. Amen. The Bible said, Tell you the daughter of Zion, behold, the king cometh, amen, unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, even the the foal of an ass. And it was prophesied that Christ would come in that way, meek and humble. And how many knows him in Jerusalem, the Jews, they were not looking for a man to come. Amen, meek and humble. They were looking for a man to come that would break the stronghold, amen, the Roman government off their back. That was a problem they had with Jesus because Jesus came as a little baby in a manger, amen, with nowhere. Amen for him to be born. There was no amen big amen ceremony happening. Amen like would be like when me and Shauna had our kids. There was family everywhere. Amen it's doctors there and nurses and amen a lot of people come to see that occasion. There was nothing like that when Jesus came. As a matter of fact, they turned them away from the end. So we don't even have anywhere for you to lay. Amen. Go somewhere else. And the Bible said they went down just a little stable in a little manger. Amen. There. Amen. Jesus Christ, the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords was born right there. And that began to be the problem. They were looking for a man. Amen. To be the king that would come and set up a government. Amen. That would be stronger than Rome. But what they did not understand that the government that was upon his shoulders and the authority that he had amen, was much greater than that of Rome. Can I tell you today in this house amen. We are serving the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. And we ought to give him a hand today, church. Amen. I want you to feel welcome here. Amen. The worship in this house. Amen. The Jews would accept him today. Up and there came three little men. The Bible said they were wise men from the east. They wasn't even Jews. 
and they said we have seen a star in the east and we have come to worship him amen there he was amen amen the high priest the Levite they didn't come but there was three men that was very wise in their own mind and they knew there was something great about the sign given unto men can I tell you today he is still the bright and morning star he is still amen my king today give the Lord a good hand my shit. Jesus comes meek and sitting upon this little coat. Hey man, I know it's, it might be, might be a little loud. If it is, just put your fingers in your ear. It'll be all right. Hey man, my church told me they like it loud. I said, well, uh, look out. <laughs> we might part your hair at the end. The Bible says that here comes Christ. And they bring this little coat to him. And some of them took their clothes off. And they laid it upon this little coat. That Christ could sit upon that and what a sign of humility that they would give what they had unto him. And I gotta ask you today, are you willing to give everything that you have today unto the Lord? And the Bible said that as Jesus gets on this little coat and begins to ride, those people not only put their clothes upon this little coat, Brother Brian, but they begin to lay them in the road. And I mean he wouldn't just walk, be able to walk over them. And some of them took branches. Him and cut them out of the trees and they laid them down in the road. And when he passed by, that he would walk over them. Amen. What a sign of humility. And they begin to cry, Hosanna, Hosanna. Amen. And under the highest. And what does Hosanna mean? It means, Lord, save us. How many knows tonight there is no other way to be saved other than through Jesus Christ? It's never going to come through Muhammad. I got news for the Muslims. They think they're doing God a service. Amen. But they're not doing God a service. Amen. The God. Amen. That's real today. His name is not Allah. Amen. But it is Jehovah. And he is alive today. I said he's alive. And he holds all power. And there is only one way to get to him today. And it is through Jesus Christ. It's not through a little rug laid down. That I will point myself to make. But it is through Jesus Christ. He is the only hope that we have in the world. It is Jesus Christ. And him crucified. We need Jesus, church. We need Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible said now that he begins to make his entrance into Jerusalem. And this great crowd of people that are crying and are worshiping him. And some of the Pharisees are mad over that. And I said, tell these people to be quiet. Tell them to hush. And Jesus told them that in one part. He said, well, he said, if I would tell them to hush. He said that immediately the rocks would begin to cry out unto me. They sang an old song, Brother Travis. He said, I don't want no rock. Amen. To cry out in my place. Amen. Why not here? I want to lift up the name of the Lord. Amen. With my hands, with my heart, with my mind, with my strength, and with my lips unto God. Hosanna in the highest. Thou son of David. Save us, O oh Lord. The only way this city will ever be saved is through the blood of Jesus Christ. My Lord, give me my hand today. He is worthy. But then Jesus, Jesus comes into the temple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Bible said that he goes in there, Brother John. And there are some things happening in the temple. That I don't believe Christ was too happy with. They had tables set up and they were selling and money exchangers. Hey Amen. They would see people would have to come to the house of God and they would have to bring an offering. But I believe they were sitting out there selling pigeons, turtle doves, selling a lot of things, and they were making money. Hey amen. Taking advantage of people. How I many of those are living in the same hour today? Can you say amen? amen. I'm just going to tell you today if you're sending your money, that some big guy on TV is probably in vain. Y'all yeah. ain't helping me now. Yeah. See, Jesus came to the house and he saw some things that shouldn't have been happening in the house of God. Yeah. And the first thing that he done, 
He didn't go to him and politely say, if you don't mind, will you please stop this? But it turned the stomach so greatly. He meant such he meant bitterness in the stomach because of what he seen. The Bible said that he went and he began to turn over their tables and he began to run them out of the house of God. And the Bible said, he spoke to them and said, is it not written that my house shall be a house of prayer and you have made it a den of thieves. Amen. I come to tell you today, we're living in the same hour. Amen. Where Jesus ain't welcome in the house anymore. We want a lot of other things. Amen. To be going on. Amen. Somebody said, amen. I believe. Amen. Help me, Holy Ghost. I told a little mama the other day. And she said, I want to go to this church. Because there's got a big gymnasium for my son. I said, you're choosing the church for the wrong reason. You ought to go to that church. Because Jesus Christ is the foundation of it all. You don't need a gymnasium. You don't need a king. You don't need a hamburger. The one you need is Jesus Jesus Christ, I don't need entertainment. I don't need that on my back, but I need Jesus. My God. We need Jesus in the church. We need Jesus in it. But I can go to places. Put your seatbelt on now. Don't run out on me right now. Because I can go to places and I can preach about the Holy Ghost and they shout the house down. But I can preach about Jesus and now I'll go to sleep. Y'all ain't helping me. <laughs> Without Jesus, there is no comforter. Come on now. Why can I preach a message of the cross for the traps? And I look back and everybody's asleep. I say it's Jesus Christ and crucified. Oh, it is hell. We was in enough to first to come to the house of God. And hope to see the preacher around a little bit. And see somebody take on that side. I want to see it as bad as you do. But I need Jesus to be in the house. Oh, before I need anything else. I need Jesus. And how will he be real in your life? Through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because Jesus said when he comes, he will not testify of himself. But he will testify of me. And he will glorify me. Well, I say if you go to sleep on the matches of the cross, you have no idea who the Holy Ghost is. Amen. 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 We need Jesus. Amen. We need Jesus, church. Amen. Listen, I can offer him and carnival rides in the parking lot for kids. And I might do it. I don't know. I'm not going to say I won't. I'm not going to say I will. But I know this much. If I ain't got Jesus, all I've got is a carnival ride. Amen. And a good way to send some folk to hell. Because without Jesus, it's pointless. Amen. Amen. I said, without Jesus, it's pointless, right? Amen. 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 I want to see your children gloriously saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Son, I want to see my girl prophesying filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to see your children saved. I want to see the drug addict saved. I want to see the prostitute saved. I want to see the homosexuals come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I want to see the dope dealers come and lay a pen at the altar. But if we ain't got Jesus, it will never happen. We need Jesus. And I got to go on. I got to go on. The Bible said that these men, certain Greek men that come, They've been, no doubt they've heard about Jesus. they probably never seen him, Brother Brown, they probably went right to him. But they came from a great way off because they heard about him. And I don't say that they went to Philip, some of the disciples, and they said, Sir, we want to see Jesus. <laughs> My Lord, how many today wants to see Jesus? Amen. Listen, I want to see him. I've never seen him in the flesh, but I heard I've never seen his physical body stand before me, but I know this much, there is coming a day. <laughs> there shall I lay my eyes upon him. Amen, just like Thomas did and said, I want to lay my hands. Amen, on the scars. I want to be able to thrust my hand into 
other side of the Albany. I believe there is coming a day. And a sister and Amen. And every born again believer. Amen. Will behold the Lamb of God. I don't know about you, but that makes me want to run outside. I want to see Jesus. I've got a desire to see him. And I know if I keep myself a spotted from the world. It is our hope that we see him. For Paul said, for me to live is Christ. But for me to die, it's a gain. He said to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. I want to be present with the Lord, don't you? I've often dreamt. I love you, honey. I really do. But I remember when we were dating. I know it's been a while ago. We've been married 15 years now, ain't we, honey? But I remember that first date that we had. <laughs> it was a blind date. That's the only way you might get to go out with me. <laughs> Boy, y'all laughing at <clears throat> How's nervous this could be? How's nervous? I don't even know what she looks like. I don't know. Is she going to be ugly? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know. I'm just being real with you. And I remember that when my cousin Steve rolled up in the parking lot in the driveway and she got out the car out of the, out of the truck, I said, Phew. She's pretty. She's pretty. I remember that. Amen. And we had a date, and, and after the first date, I had a longing inside of me to be with her again. There was someone inside of me. There was a connection that was made. There was a love. There was a bond that began to form. And Brother Brian, I desired to be with her. I desired to be with her. Oh, heavenly Lord. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. If we are really in love with Christ, then why is the desire not present to be with him? Amen. Come on now. Y'all ain't helping me no more. If we really love him, and why do we not have such a strong desire in our heart to say, no matter if I gotta swim the depths of the ocean to get down to my prayer closet, I'll get there. That I might be alone with the Lord for a while. Come on, somebody. If I gotta cross every mountain and river and valley there is just to get down to the house of God, the fellowship of my brothers and sisters, that my precious groom, amen, will be in the house with a bride. I'll do what I gotta do to get to where he is. Do you love him enough today, church? Amen, to press your way to where he is to get to the place where Christ will be with you. Do you really want to see him? Do you really want to be with him? Hallelujah. The Bible said we're, we're not going to, we won't be much longer. I didn't put a clock in this church for good reason. Number one, I forgot. Number two, when I remembered, I said, I don't want one. <laughs> the Bible said that Jesus was passing through Jericho. Passing by, passing through Jericho. And there was this man who was a very rich man. Very, very rich. I would call him the chief among the publicans. Publicans were tax collectors. Does anybody like the IRS? All of you should have raised your hand if we really got Jesus like we need him. Because Jesus said, render to Caesar what Caesar. Ah, oh, come on, y'all. The tax collector, the chief publican, he would he would rob folk. He would take money from them. He would he would take the cut that belonged to Caesar. He would also take some for himself. They were not good men. Nobody liked them. Nobody liked them. But the Bible said that when Jesus was coming through Jericho, there was a man by the name of Zacchaeus. He was chief among all publicans. He was very rich. The Bible said that he desired to see Jesus. The Bible said that when Jesus was to pass by that way, Zacchaeus ran out to meet Christ. But the Bible said that Zacchaeus was a small man, small in stature. And he could not see him for the press. So it's a great crowd. I mean, it was when Jesus is really there. You can't keep the people away. 
Uh, come on now. The Bible said that Zacchaeus, amen, when he could not get to where Jesus was, the Bible said that he ran on before the crowd and he climbed up into a tree that he might see him. Not that he might touch him, not that he might hug him, not that he might talk to him, but he only wanted to see him. Seeing him was enough. He'd never seen Christ. Amen. But he was getting ready to have a rude awakening. Amen. And the Bible said that while Jesus is coming through, amen, to the great crowd, the Bible said, uh, and then the sycamore tree, and here's Zacchaeus, and uh, he's climbed up in the air, uh, and was sitting out on one of the branches, Brother Jamie, and then just to get a look at Jesus. And the Bible said that when Jesus walks by, uh, and he looks at his season, he'd never met Zacchaeus before, but he called him by name. Uh, he said, Zacchaeus, uh, and then come down uh, and make haste. Uh, and then Today I must abide in thine house. And Zacchaeus said, Lord, if I wronged any man, if I took anything from anybody, I'll give it back to the Lord. And then everything I've got, I'll give it to the poor. All they really wanted was Jesus. Oh, help me, Lord. Do we really have that desire for Christ that we're willing to give up everything that we are in life? That's kind of the reaction I expected. Because we will spend. I'm glad I got a shield about me today. We will spend every waking moment that we have to just try to make the life better for these little fellers. And totally neglect the one thing that will make them better and stronger than anything in this life. And that's to be raised in a Christian home. But daddies don't pray with mamas no more. And daddies don't pray over the kids no more. Some of y'all do. Mamas don't pray over the babies no more. Bless. Mamas don't anoint the husbands no more. Bless. The prayer calls that's almost non-existent in the home. Church, we need to see Jesus. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. That might hurt a little bit, but just say amen anyway. Yeah. Are you willing to give up their heart? Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. We're doing everything preaching against college. Y'all gonna get mad at me. But we will study every kind of book that we can that we might gain some knowledge in this world to be better in the world than what we are. I don't really care if I am the president of the company I work for or if I'm going to pick up pop cans and see me, but I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost when I do it. Amen. Are you willing today? Amen. We're studying, studying, studying. How about we get around that old coffee table again open up the Word of God God, show me, uh, show me the word. Uh, make the scripture alive to me that I might be stronger in you uh, than what I was yesterday. We need the word of God. For it is the very life of Christ. Everything in this Bible is about him. We need to see Jesus. Church, we need to see Jesus. So if your money is more important to you, your job or your social status or your degree on your wall. If it is more important than Jesus, you better come down out of that tree and get to where he is. Because you will be lost in the end. Because there's only room for one person to be king in your life. It's either you or it's him. And this is why, Brother David, we won't have a big church. Because of that preaching. But church, we need Jesus more than I need a better job. Come on. More than I need another car, Sean. Because all it brings me is another payment and another worry and make me work more. But I want to be a man that works for the gospel, that works for Jesus Christ, my King, the whole King. I want to see Jesus real in my life. He said, sir, we want to see Jesus. Do you want to see him today? What, what do you mean, do I want to see him? In your life. <coughs> because we wake up in the mornings and we have so many things we worry about. And generally the first thing that we see is worries. When we wake up. 
because they take priority in our life. Brother Travis, when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I want to be on my heart and my mind is Jesus. It's Jesus. Y'all okay this morning? Is Jesus king in your life? Is he king? I didn't ask how well you sung. How well you play instruments. When was the last time that you were alone with the king? I heard a song where the bride said, take me to the king. Hallelujah. If anybody ever had a petition in the land and they needed the most help of anybody in the land and needed the authority, they went to the king and they would make a petition of the king. So many were refused. You know, if you was to go to the White House right now and say, I need to see the president, they'd lie for you. They'd lie for you. They'd say, who do you think you are? see him. Why well, if I even go to the governor's office and walk in and say, I want to see my governor. It's, you don't have an appointment. And who are you anyway? Hallelujah. But I'm glad that I can get to the king. I'm glad they can take me to the king. Yes. And I'm glad that the king came looking for me.
I said, Lord, I know the vision that you have given me for London, Kentucky. I know what you've taught, I know what you told me. Because he said, Claude, I want you on Main Street. No, I want you on Main Street. And it broke my heart when I seen this, the first sign go up on Main Street. I know y'all recording this, and I don't care to call it my name, and Weaver's Hot Dogs. I said, Bud Wines, and my heart was broke. And I said, I don't want to raise my children in a place where that's on the corners. I said, God, I don't know what to do, but I know this much. I said, if you don't take it off Main Street on by your own, own power, and I know you can. I said, we'll do everything that we can to shut the place down. <laughs> the only hope that this place has is Jesus. We need to see Jesus today in action. I'm tired of the church. I'm talking about the building. Because I'm just going to preach to y'all just for about two minutes now. Because y'all go to church and y'all say, I hope we have a good service. I hope I can sing and slap my cymbals and dance around the altar and lay out in the floor and speak in tongues and then I'm going to leave the house of God and I'll go home and nobody will ever change. And I'm tired of it. Tired of it. Tired of it. The devil is not afraid but how many times you shout? You all think I'm going to shout. No, I'm not. But unless Jesus is in the middle of it, it ain't nothing but emotions. I ain't just speaking in tongues, but without Jesus, it's just gibberish. The devil ain't afraid of your shout or your song. But what he is afraid of is when you get so desperate that you would crawl your way to an altar to say, I gotta see Jesus. I gotta see Jesus for my household. I gotta see Jesus for my workplace. I gotta see Jesus for the school that I go to. I gotta see Jesus for my church. I gotta see Jesus for my city. I see Jesus. That's all. That's it. Somebody say, What's the remedy, preacher? What's the remedy? What's the remedy for this world? It's Jesus. Bow your head with me if you will. <coughs> Are you here today and you feel like you have said, I'm talking to, I won't talk to the church just for a minute. I won't talk to the church. Do you feel like you've got yourself in a place with the Lord where you don't see Jesus as clearly in your life? That can be fixed today. It can be. When was the last time you heard him speak to you? When was the last time you heard the voice of your shepherd? You need to see him. You need to hear him today. Are you here today? I don't know anybody's heart. I'm not going to call anybody out. But are you here today and you feel like you've separated yourself from him? Maybe you feel like you've backslid. You don't feel like that if the Lord was to come today that you're ready to meet him. Nobody's looking. It's me and you and the Lord. It's just us.